Welcome all you listeners to our service. I am uh, E.J. Buckhart. I am filling in for Dr. Hanson Day, who is with his family, celebrating Thanksgiving out of state and won't be back until Monday. And I've been serving with Dr. Hanson for over 23 years, for those who don't know who I am. And it's been a blessing to be under his leadership and to be able to serve with him for all those years. The title of my message today is Use Your Tool with Skill. Any occupation has to have tools to work with, but they also have the skill to use that tool. If a carpenter has all the tools available, doesn't know how to use them, it does not do them any good. I don't think you'd want to live in the house that they built. We are living in a challenging time. But not only in a challenging time, but we're living in times of responsibility. We have new inventions around and cell phones and computers that are now inside the phone itself. And it's becoming fairly addictive, but it is a good tool. But it has to be used responsibly. And if you don't use it responsibly, it doesn't do any good. When I say we're living in challenging times, Satan is running wild in our society and our culture. Not that he hasn't been that way in the past, but we see it because we're living in this time and we see how he is running wild. Unfortunately, a culture is following most of the ideas of Satan instead of the God our Father. But there's good news. We have the tools necessary to defeat Satan in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones, and in our culture. I grew up in a culture that actually respected God. That means that I am not 25 years old. I'm not 30 years old. Not even 50 years old. But I can do what my dad said when he turned 90. He said, I am proud to be 90 years old. And I can say, I'm proud to be 80. I haven't caught him yet, but I'm proud to be 80 years old. But we grew up in a time where we went to school, you opened in prayer. You had Bible reading. You had respect for your teachers. You had respect for your parents and your elders. Most of us did, especially those that are born and raised in a Christian culture. But once that changed in the 1960s, we have been going downhill. And the sad part about it is our church has kind of fallen to the wayside of the culture. Getting back to the tools. In many professions, they have a variety of tools to use. If you use the carpenters, they have nails, they have saws, they have hammers, and they've got so many new type of equipment, it's unbelievable to do and accomplish the task that they have at hand. In Christianity, we have a tool, one major tool to accomplish our task. But just because we have that tool, the Bible, just because we have it, Unless we have the skill to use it, we're not going to be of any value to the Lord. That tool we need today is is to pick up and grab our Bible, the Word of God. But we need to develop the skill to use it. Without the skill to use it, the tool or tools in any profession are useless. Since the Bible is our necessary tool, we need not only to read it and to study it, but we need to put it into action. To stand on the word of God and not on the word of man. We must rely on the benefits of the Lord and not the benefits of the state. In our culture today, many people, including some of us, Sometimes we rely more on the benefits of the state than on the benefits of God. That's something you've got to stop and think about. What benefits do you want? Do you want God's benefits or do you want man's benefits? 
And if you turn to Psalm 68, verse 19, those who have your Bible, that have your tool with you, and those that have your laptops, you've got it on your Bible reading there. Blessed is the Lord who daily loadeth us with his benefits, even the God of our salvation. And you slip over to Psalms 103, verse 2. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all of diseases. And no, that's verse 3. But verse 2 is, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Psalms 116, verse number 12. Verse 116, verse 12. And, oh, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? We need to begin to start accepting the benefits of the Lord. And there are many, many benefits of the Lord. Today, my heart's desire is to challenge all of us not only to believe, not only to trust, and not only to have the confidence, but to honor His Word in our lives. All of us here really believe in Jesus Christ. We have the faith in Jesus, but do we truly trust him? Or is it just words we say, I trust in the Lord? To believe is one thing. To have faith in the Lord is another. But to trust in the Lord is a totally different thing. Have you really ever thought about the differences of these three concepts? That is, believing in, having faith in, and trusting in. But before I go on any further with the trust issue, I want to mention the concept that we need to know Him. Because without knowing Him, we cannot trust Him. Dr. Hansen has taught us many, many times that we need to know Jesus. And to know someone is not the same as knowing that someone. I remember, and I think I've talked this to this group before, <coughs> excuse me, that I was a pilot. I had my own little flying service at one time, even though I worked with the airlines for 32 years. But when I was laid off, I had my own little air, air service, and I was flying a beautiful twin engine turboprop airplane for a friend. And I was in his office one day, or coming into his office, and he saw me coming in, he waved at me, come here. So I, I go in, he's on the telephone talking away to Ronnie, and I'm just sitting there waiting for him for to finish the call. Now I know who Ronnie is, but at that time I didn't know who I was talking to. And uh, he hung up the phone, oh, for a while he's on the phone, he says, EJ, uh, say hi to Ronnie. He says, hi Ronnie. He says, hi EJ back on the phone. That was it. I didn't think too much about it. When he got on off the phone, he says, E.J., do you know who Ronnie is? I said, I have no clue. He says, you just spoke to the President of the United States, Ronnie Reagan. Now, I knew who Ronnie Reagan was, but I don't really know him, even though I said hi to him. But I always remember that. You know, it was kind of, had a chance to talk to someone in the government of high authority. Never talked to another president before in my life, but all I said was, hi, Ronnie. But again, once again, you know, we know who the president is. All of us know who our pre former president is and the one who's sitting in the office now. We know them by name. We really don't know them. Many people know Jesus by name. But do you really know who he is? We can say nice things about Jesus. We can say all the good things, especially those who have been trained in biblical schools and Bible school and seminaries and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and go to church every Sunday, and some of us go to church on Sabbath. But we know the name Jesus, but do you really know him? That's my challenge. Do we really know him? To have faith requires a heart of understanding, 
a heart knowledge in whom we believe. But to trust in him requires a total confidence that releases all of our fears, all of our doubts, and all of our unbelief. Unbelief is what destroys our trust and our faith. Please understand that God responds to our trust, to our faith, and our confidence in him. He likes that when we trust totally in him. That is why Peter, Peter was able to get out of the boat and walk in the water. Jesus responded to Peter's trust and said, Come, Peter. Just as Jesus knew Peter trusted him in his word. The reason Peter began to sink while walking on the water, he took his eyes off of Jesus because of the circumstances of the storm that was around him. Yes, we must keep our eyes on Jesus at all times, but we can walk on water. If God asked you to walk on water, you could do it. Do you believe that? Peter did. Yeah. And, and by the way, I always think about it, how did he get back to the boat? After Jesus reached out with his hand and picked him up, do you think Jesus carried him back? No, he walked back on the water. What's that tell us? When we go and walk on the water, when Jesus says, come, we do it, but we take our eyes off of him, worry about the circumstances that we're going through, and we're living in that time of some very unusual circumstances. If we, don't, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can walk with him. We can walk in that water. He will see us through. Interesting thing is that every country that's become prosperous, and America has been a very prosperous nation, but once they have that, they begin to worship their idols of their land. And God's a God of judgment, and he's also a God of love. But he will bring judgment upon a nation that turns of him. Like I said, back when I was a young boy going to school, Bible study, we read the Bible in school. Matter of fact, sometimes we even studied it. We prayed, and we respected it. And I believe the church today has turned from trusting in the Lord. They've turned trust into self and prosperity. We don't need God. I mean, we've got everything we need. One car, two car, three cars, one home, two home, three homes, food, refrigerators. I've got two refrigerators, three freezers to keep my food. We've been blessed. But we can't let that blessing, which is a benefit of the world, take over the benefits of God, which is total salvation, eternal life. Understand that our peace and joy always depends on our trust in the Lord. Remember that it's just not good enough to say, I trust in the Lord completely. I have to prove it over in my life. And remember, the enemy is always out there to tempt you to destroy your tempt in the Lord. The enemy are constantly being attacking our trust. But God, through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we will have victory over the enemy. In the last year, basically, in my life, I've had to come to the point to say, EJ, you need to start trusting on the Word of God. Now, these people sitting here before me at our staff service here have heard this before, but it's a healing. But for those who have not heard this, I was an airline pilot for 32 years. But believe it or not, I had heart condition at age 17, which would have kept me out of flying. But I thought I had a heart attack when I was about 24, 25, 24. And went to the cardiologist, and he says, you don't have anything wrong with your heart whatsoever. How long have you been feeling this way? I says, oh, probably about two months. I had a pain in my chest. And if you've had a heart condition, you have pains in your chest, it can bring fear if you think physical life is more important than spiritual life. 
hey, hey, that's us. We like to live, to see our children and grandchildren. And he said, how long had two years, two months? He says, you got walking pneumonia. Go home. Your heart is fine. Within two days, I was, took my first flying lesson. Ended up flying for the airlines for 32 years with that heart condition. Taking tests with the FAA. They approved it. It's not a thing. But anyway, when I was about 79, it's last year, I started having a lot of pains. A lot of chest pains. Rapid heartbeat, which I know how to stop. That's why it doesn't cause a problem. Cardiologist says we need to do some surgery. I says, okay. And uh, we set up the surgery. And I says, the Lord says, EJ, you're going to have to start trusting me. You've got some other problems that are dealing in your life that you want solved. Start trusting me. Stand on my word that I will be with you. I will see you through. I am your healer. Amen. And so I told the doctor, uh, I'm not going to have the surgery. I'm going to stand on the Lord's promises that he will heal it. But two months later, I realized I did not have any more rapid heartbeats. I could probably say this. My, my, my wife is here and my son is here. They know what happened because one day it was in the kitchen and I went, on the floor, just boom, right now on the floor. I immediately jumped up because I've had this happen before, and I went down again. That time I don't remember it. But then they said I got up and went down the third time. By that time, my son had already called 911. And I got up and I went over and sat down in the chair. 911 came, they took me to the doctor, had to spend a weekend in the hospital. That's when these cardiologists said, We need to go in to do the surgery. So I scared the living daylights out of my wife and my son. I mean, that's as if when they looked at me, they figured I was dead. So the Lord's worked a lot of miracles in me. I've been laid off when I was with the airlines. I was laid off five times. Three times I got laid notice before Christmas. December 23rd, you will be laid off January 6th. Now, that's the loss of your job. I didn't know what I was going to do. And if you're off for two years, you totally lose your job. But praise the Lord. The Lord saw me through that. And the reason I mention this is that we need to look back onto your life. I don't care if you're only 15 years old. Look back in your life and just say, can you remember when the Lord saw you through it? Whether you were a Christian at the time or not doesn't make any difference. I could have been dead myself at least twice. I was born and raised on a farm. That's a dangerous occupation in some ways. And I won't go into details on it, but the Lord saved me. I, I did not die. Scared the living daylights out of my mother when I had a 18 bales of hay fall on top of me in the rack, but I jumped out of the way and survived. Broke the rack. I was driving a tractor with my niece on the manure spreader in the back in a little seat that used to be driven by horses. You sat back down the range and all of a sudden I hit a bump and the seat went up and she went off underneath the spreader. Scared the living daylights out of me. But she was up behind running back to catch me back up. Little things like this. I was driving a car. And this tells you folks, don't get so upset when people do strange things to you. I had a lady, she ticked me off so bad I had to slow down. That slowdown saved my life and probably my life's life and my passenger. Because if I would have been going normally, this car came over the edge, rolled upside down, and smashed in front of us. I had enough time to stop. Somehow the Lord sees that now. But stop to think, how many times has the Lord seen you through something? And this brings me back to the, the Bible. What did Jesus always constantly remind Israel of after they left Egypt? Remember, I brought you out of Egypt, out of slavery. Remember what God has done for you. Deuteronomy 6.12 
It says, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord that brought you forth out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. Let us not forget our founding fathers who founded this country on biblical principles. A constitution that is based on biblical principles. Let's not forget that. If we forget that, we're going down the wrong road. We're going down the wrong road. I want to look at some of the songs that we sing. And we had some beautiful worship songs today. Uh, last Saturday, we had one song that says, uh, Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. A benefit of the Lord. He says, his report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. His report says, I am free. And my wife has added this one remote. And his report says, I have victory. Amen. That's not part of the song, but that's what my added to it. We have the victory. Yes. What a benefit, Lord. In another song we sing, we sing it, we worship it, it's a beautiful song, but do we truly, truly believe in the words? I surrender all, I surrender all, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust the Lord. I will forever love and trust the Lord. Another one is, oh, victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. I heard the old, old story of a Savior came from glory. He gave me his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning and his precious blood atoning. Then I repented and won the victory. Amen. Now this is the one I... This is a song, I've, I have so much fun with this one. Uh, I noticed I took it out of a big hymnal, old hymn, and I got asterisks at line one, line five, and line six. Line two, three, and four, they don't sing because it takes too long to sing the hymn, totally. Beautiful song, it says, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. That's number two. Number three, take my voice and let me sing always, always, only unto thee. And let's go to number five. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet is the treasure or is the treasure store. Number six, take my will and make it thine. It shall no longer be mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. And now the one that's always left out. I call this the prosperity, take my life. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use it every as power thou hast chosen. Take my silver and my gold. I wonder why so many times this song is sung, they leave that out. That's your finances, folks. Take my finances. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I need that. But what did God say of his benefits? I will provide you with all that you have. I will meet all of your needs. Do you think this stupid government of ours is going to provide all your needs? No. They're just going to use you and then throw you away. God does not do that. His benefits keep you. Seriously think. Do you want the benefits of the state or do you want the benefits of God? Stop relying on this worldly needs that God said he would provide them all for you. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Now, when I said I made that commitment not to have the surgery, I had to believe that I would be healed. The Lord honored that. Amen. 
We have others in this room that the Lord has healed because we are starting to take a stand. I am going to stand on the Word of God for what it says. Yes. This is the one that I also like. Because he lives. God did not just die on the cross, but he rose again from the dead. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Have you lost all your fear? I have to admit, sometimes I fear. Okay, I haven't lost it all. I'm learning, and i got a few more years to learn it. And some of you have more time than I do. But because he lives, all fear is gone. We don't live strictly for this life. We live for eternal life. Because I, because I know, I know he holds my future. And my life is worth living just because he lives. Amen. And now one of the favorite psalms I have. And my wife and I pray this every day. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place in the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. COVID. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall on thy side and ten thousand on thy right hand but it shall not come near thee. Only with their eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge and the Most High, thy habitation. There shall be no evil before you, for he shall give his angels charge over you and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against the stone. They shall tread upon the lion and the otter, the young lion and the dragon, they shall trample under feet. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show us thy salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Let us all concentrate and study your word and teach it and understand it and use it with a powerful tool. In Jesus' name, amen.